Hello everyone, I'm the Nerdy Fool, and welcome to a new game on the channel, Subnautica. I put up a poll on my YouTube channel, asking out of a handful of games what people wanted to see, and the vote came in for Subnautica, which I am happy to play. So, quick update on my background with Subnautica. I've never personally played it, but I have watched a playthrough. So I will probably know some of the story beats, but... I haven't actually gone through it myself, and so you'll still get to watch me flail around and get lost and whatnot. But I know some of what's, well, I basically know what's coming up in the story. Now for Subnautica 2, Below Zero I think it was called, I haven't watched a playthrough of that, so if and when we get to that, that will be going in blind without spoilers. So that should be good for those of you that want to see a playthrough with me not knowing what's coming up. But for this one, I have some ideas. But with that all out of the way, let's hop on in. Start a new game. We're going to play on survival, of course. That's, in my opinion, how the game is meant to be played. Uh, I'm not doing hardcore. That's madness. <laughs> now, I do want to take the time to read the PDA. Some people like that. Some people don't. But there's lots of entries about lore on the world, and I want to go through that. Which, hopefully everyone's cool with. <laughs> yes, Dorenda, public displays of affection is what I was mentioning when I talked about a PDA. You are correct. This game has so much public displays of affection. <laughs> mode with one directive to keep you alive on an alien world please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice good luck it amuses me the optimal outcome waking up with head trauma minor concussion and a burning escape pod is optimal it's the best we can hope for <laughs> All right, so when I mention wanting to read uh, PDA data, there is lots and lots and lots to read, which some people would prefer to just skip, but I still want to go through it. One thing I do recall is there is a setting to pause the game in the PDA, if I recall. Maybe that one. Uh, if I'm going to take the time to read through everything, I don't want my stats to be dropping or dealing with, you know, dangerous giant fish. I want to just be able to take my time and read and not have to rush things or whatever. Yes, good job with the extinguisher. You point at the base of the flame and sweep back and forth. I know how extinguishers work. I've never actually had to use one, though, in real life. But all right, so we will start with the start here. Start here. If you're reading this, then you have survived an emergency evacuation of a capital class ship equipped with Altera technology. Congratulations, the hard part is over. I think that's unlikely. Surviving doesn't, the crash doesn't seem the hard part. Living on the planet seems the hard part. But what do I know? Your PDA is automatically rebooted in, in emergency mode. This operating system has one directive, to keep you alive on a hostile alien world. If that is not possible, it will alert salvage teams to the location of your remains. 
It features full monitoring of vital signs, timely survival advice, blueprints for fabricating a range of essential survival equipment tailored to your environment, onboard camera, microphone, and OCR technology for short-range situational analysis, and cross-compatibility compa- wow. cross with all Altera compliant products. MB, your personal and work files have been encrypted and may be retrieved at a later date by a licensed engineer. Survival checklist. 1. Administer first aid if required. We do need some. Take inventory of available materials and supplies and decide on rations. Survey the environment for threats and resources. Construct necessary survival equipment using the life pods fabricator. Check life pod for damage and repair as necessary. Broadcast local distress signal using the life pods short range radio. Locate other survivors using line of sight or the radio. Find or construct a more permanent habitat. Maintain physical and psychological health until rescue. And B, this information is meant as a general guide. In the first instance, you should always follow the advice of your PDA, which is taking your particular circumstance into account. Warning, blueprint database corrupted. Damage to your PDA's hard drive has corrupted approximately 80% of stored survival blueprints. Blueprints may be reacquired by scanning a salvage technology using the handheld scanner or by downloading plans from a shipboard data box. In the circumstances, these assets will most likely be found among the wreckage from the Aurora. We're going to just start moving from here. We'll come back and read other things as we go along, but I don't want to just spend this whole first hour or two just reading. But that's a good starting point of what's going on in the world. So first, taking inventory. We have a couple of flares, some water, and nutrient blocks for food. Um, we don't actually need any of that now. You can see we're already... The bubbles go up to 100, if I recall. So these fill 75, so we don't want to waste it. The water only fills 20, but we would overflow. And I don't know if you can... I assume if you go over, it's just wasted. So I'll hold off on using that. We've got this medical fabricator, which will periodically fabricate more uh, med kits. So we can just easily use one of those to heal ourselves. Fabricator, we can do basic resources, some more electronic components like wire, batteries, etc. Food and water, various equipments like oxygen tanks and fins versus tools. There's the scanner they told us about, etc. And then deployables that we can use that are bigger, better things, as I recall. But with that out of the way, let's just start exploring. <laughs> the Aurora suffered orbital pile failure. Cause unknown. Zero human life signs detected. Yeah, it's bad news for our ship. I don't think it's supposed to be on fire or sitting in the ocean. Alien life forms may have unexpected applications. Utilizing alien resources is a proven survival strategy. I keep expecting to pick things up with E, like normal games, and it's left click and it's confusing me. So we'll get some acid mushrooms. Ah. Break limestone. Cop Can do. Is an essential component of all powered equipment. Your probability Oxygen. of survival has just increased to unlikely. <laughs> uh, likelihood of survival is now unlikely. Good, good. So we want to find more of those limestone chunks because copper and I think titanium come out of them and are useful. And am I just blind? There we go. And we probably should collect a handful of fish. So we have them on hand, as it were, when I need to eat. Get over here, you. I 
can see my oxygen depleting. Oxygen. Yeah. Hey, friend. Oh, I know these guys. I remember them. Oh, they're like creepers from Minecraft. There's an old reference. But you just get that angry noise. And all you can do is run and hope to survive. But I'm too slow. <laughs> Alright, my health is doing poorly. <laughs> Didn't realize I'd run into a second one of those. Alright. Oh, I'm still so far from another med kit. Bad news. Alright, what can I make though? We can make titanium from the metal salvage we found. So ideally, I think first things I'd want to get is an oxygen tank and fins. So I can move faster and stay under longer. Titanium is found in limestone, right? That's my understanding. But you can also get titanium from the metal salvage. We'll get the oxygen tank. That'll allow me to survive longer. Blueprint acquired. Um, and I will keep the food and water that they gave me. I suppose water doesn't matter, but the dried blocks of food last longer. So I think I will cook some of these to eat rather than eating those. Small organisms while disposing of the skeletal structure, bodily fluids, and internal organs, thus rendering them safe for human consumption. So yeah, they only last so long before they start going bad. As opposed to those nutrient blocks that'll last forever. So I'm gonna keep those around and eat this instead. It looks like I can use another one. Uh, was this research while playing Terraria or something? I am unsure of what you mean, pseudonym. I didn't grab that, and I meant to. Again, I keep trying to click E to grab things, which I should have learned by now is not how this game works. Thank you, Peeper. I should actually look at what I'm trying to build. I want to stay away from caves because if I get hit by another one of those explodey guys, I'm dead. <laughs> and they hang out in caves. But I know one of them is gone, and so the sulfur that he was sitting on is now available for me to grab if I knew where that cave was. But I still think it's too dangerous for me to go back there. Where are more limestone deposits? Oxygen. So for the first while, we're going to just chill kind of in this local area, which is theoretically safer than going farther abroad. What is titanium doing in limestone or even copper? Uh, I don't know. Standard video game logic. So we want to get a scanner, which will take a battery. Um, and a repair tool, which takes silicon rubber. Can I make a battery? I can. That was the acid mushrooms that we grabbed and copper. Yeah, it's an alien world. Things are different. Blueprints from salvage technology and to accord alien biological data. High capacity O2 tank. We need glass and silver. That's going to be a while. Silicon rubber. Um. Yeah. Most of that seems pretty easy. I know where to get silicon rubber. 
just from watching before. So I think that's my next goal. Yeah. So first of all, we can scan. Come back, you're too fast. All right, I don't get to scan you. But if we scan stuff, then it gets added to our data bank as a new thing. Acid mushrooms, a common spore-bearing fungi species. The flesh contains a highly acidic compound, which leaches into the water if the outer skin is penetrated. It is not clear which predator species necessitated such extreme countermeasures, but the acid mushroom's number suggests it has successfully deterred most of them. Assessment. Inedible. Acid has applications and battery application. So, one of the benefits of reading these is it will let you know of things that would be useful to grab that ingredient for. Writhing weed. Coral shell plate. Hey, boomerang. Stay still. Thank you. Bladder fish. All right. It is getting dark. Hopefully it's not too dark for you guys. So there are occasional things that we can scan just from the environment that will help us find missing technologies. Because I said 80% of our technologies in our PDA were corrupted. Which is really bad. Like, they should have made the PDA better able to survive crash landings. Ooh, sea glide. Oh, something. Oh, a limestone chunk. Brilliant. Anything else I can scan? More beacon fragments. So after you fully scanned a fragment, then you get titanium for rescanning fully ex scanned items. So it's still useful to scan them. Oh, 30 seconds. I've got plenty of time. Sea glide fragment. Good. Nice. Sea glide is going to be a valuable tool. Hey there, buddy. You don't mind if I scan you. Come on. I need to get oxygen. Might have been taking a bit too long. Oh yeah, definitely was. Maybe? No. I know they give you a good amount of uh, time after you run out of oxygen to get back. But apparently I took it too far. Ah, well. First death. Yep, it happens. Let's go back to the scanner. Because that's going to be the main tool I want. So you're already scanned. I want to make sure that, that still counts. Yeah. I've got you scanned. So... Here, kelp forest. That's what I'm looking for. I think. So we've got these enemies that are actually dangerous, but not majorly so. They will do some damage to me.
Nope, go back to the scanner. I want to scan one of these guys. Stalker. Life on this planet grows in unusually distinct and Ow. diverse ecological biomes. Further study recommended. Gotcha. What? 30 seconds. One nice thing about dying is it restored my health. So, I got that going for me. Scan the creep vine. And how many of these? Oh, I filled my inventory. All right, let's get back. I didn't realize we were that far away. Go quickly. So there's going to be a lot of resource gathering in this series, and I hope that doesn't bore people overly much, but that's the nature of this style of game. All right. Uh, oh, I can get a new med kit. Definitely do that before I forget. And we now need to make some silicon rubber. We can also make lubricant out of the creep seed, creep vine seed clusters, but right now, silicon rubber is bigger need. Probably don't need all of this turned into silicon rubber, but it does shrink down the volume it's taking in my inventory, so I'm gonna do it. Probably shouldn't have grabbed that many creep vines. All right. Uh, what next, tool wise? Knife could be good. Repair tool, that's what we wanted. So we can fix up our pod. As well as fins. The fabricator draws from available data to provide environment appropriate equipment using locally available materials. For your safety, this setting cannot be overridden. All right. Um, I want the ch scanner first, repair tool second, I guess. I don't actually need any of this on my hotbar. Yeah. So, repair tool. Let's stop this thing from sparking. Lightpod secondary systems online. Running full environment diagnostic and outputting results to databank. Let's look at information on... Oh, we've got geological data. That's what well, they're talking about the planet. 4546B environment scan, category 3 ocean planet. Oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere, extensive biodiversity. Safety warnings may support Leviathan class predators. Water contaminated with high levels of foreign bacteria. Planet is beyond Federation space. Rescue unlikely. It is not recommended to explore this environment without hazardous material suits and extensive support apparatus. Limestone outcrops. Since Pseudonym didn't like how the planet was handling limestone, let's read how the game suggests it. These unusual geological structures often form around titanium and copper deposits and are distinct to this planet. Closer analysis reveals the stone around the metal has been hardened against erosion, but the mechanisms remain unknown. Assessment, titanium and copper source. So they just say it works and move on from there. Uh, handheld scanner. The essential science and survival tool. The scanner can be used to add new blueprints to memory and analyze unknown entities. It emits electromagnetic radiation in the specified direction, which is reflected by the environment and then analyzed to determine the physical makeup of the targeted object. It has four primary functions. Record uh, blueprint acquisition. Record the physical pr parameters of scan technology to add their blueprints to the PDA databank. These blueprints may then be constructed at the appropriate fabricator. The scanner is also equipped to break down damaged and otherwise useless devices into the base materials for salvage purposes. 
Organism analysis. The scanner will attempt to match scanned organisms against the onboard database. If no match is found, then the species will be assigned an easy to remember name, and a new databank entry will be created. Your PDA's AI will also attempt to synthesize theories on behavioral tendencies and evolutionary origins where possible, as well as deliver assessments on how best to approach them. Medical analysis. Scanning any living organism will display basic information on the state of health on the scanner's HUD. This information will be limited without access to a network database. And self-scan. The user may run a self-scan to determine their own physical well-being. The scanner will search for foreign bacteria and other signs of ill health and compare with available data to provide a diagnosis. The Altera Spectrosc Spectro Spectroscope Scanner. Understanding the world so you don't have to. And the repair tool. The repair tool can be targeted at any common device control panels, hab habitat modules, radios, etc. to stitch wires and steams back together at the atomic level. All good technicians keep one of these under their pillow. Most people don't care why it works, just that it saved their life that one time. But in case you're curious, it combines scanner and fabricator technologies to determine the proper specifications for the targeted object and then rearranges the available physical material to match the original specs. The Altera repair tool. Get your fix. This would be an amazing technology to actually have in the real world. <laughs> PDA scans a shark. Match found. Dog acquired. Yes. No, so th because this is an uncharted planet, all of the various flora and fauna that we are scanning are showing up with just names that it's giving because they're not in the, uh, the data bank. So it's just like, uh, we're going to call that a gasopod. Sure. This one we're calling a stalker. Why not? Radio, we've got a message. This is an alarm. Distress signal received. Rescue Radio operation will be dispatched to your location in 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 hours. Continue to monitor for emergency transmissions from other life pods. Nine 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 hours. That could be a while. Um, we can make beacons. Probably wise to have a couple of them on me because beacons can be placed in the ocean and then they'll show up on our HUD so we can refine that location. Since I'm directionally challenged at the best of times and being underwater on an alien planet is not the best of times, I should probably have some of those. Knife would be good. Habitat Builder? I don't think we need a habitat yet. Where's the Sea Glide? I would think it would be... Oh, here. Uh, oh, I do need lubricant for that. Well, probably should have made some then. Because the rest of that, I think, is all buildable. Let's get a beacon. Just so I have one on hand. And then... Open our storage container. Let's put... I shouldn't have made that much silicon rubber. It's fine. It's fine. All right. We need more food. I'm saving the bladder fish for water. I know that that's their purpose. <laughs> I mean, they probably don't think that's their purpose, but... Yeah, you can get filtered water out of the blad bladder fish. Or out of bleach, you can make water. Bleach, I think, was harder to come by. So at least for the start, we're going to use bladderfish to get water. And we'll keep some on hand. <laughs> Drink bleach. I mean, basically, if you look at the ingredients, it's just bleach makes this. Nothing else. You're just taking bleach, tossing it into the fabricator, and it magically turns the bleach into theoretically drinkable water. Okay. Anything else that I care to make? I don't need another fire extinguisher. The floating pump, from what I recall, was not actually terribly useful. It sits on the surface, and then you try and make a chain out of pipes, but the pipes don't actually go far, and you'd have to make a giant chain to get anywhere, and... Never seemed worth it from what I saw. Uh, waterproof locker. We're not running out of space yet, so I'm going to ignore that for now. So, what do we need? We need lubricant and more copper. Which means I need more titanium clusters. And 
uh, more of the creep vine clusters. Oh, actually, with my health up, I should go back to that cave and pick up the cave sulfur from that creature that exploded on me. Assuming I can find the same cave. Which is a big ask. I feel like it was around somewhere. Oh, there was a scannable. Thought briefly. You can see down in the bottom right corner, when something can be scanned, it'll flicker a notification. And then I just have to look around and figure out what it was trying to notify me about. Well, I can get more titanium from here. Oh, I can scan it too. Cool. Where's my cave? Oh, something flashed up as scannable. I can't scan the creature egg. Well, here's a cave. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I got plenty of time. Let's go straight up, and then we can go straight back down, hopefully. Alright. I don't think this was the cave I was in before. Sandstone outcrop? That's different. Silver-based wiring kits are an essential component of many habitat modules. Oh, dude, you scared me. Shuttle bug. I don't need more acid mushrooms. I picked up quite a few of those. This is going down really far. That is how you die in a cave. It's just continuing to go deeper and deeper and losing track of the way back out. Anyway, this is not my cave, but it is a cave. And apparently it has rare materials. Detecting sulfur deposits in the local cave systems. Sulfur is an essential component of the repair tool. Right, we're getting some good materials. Uh, there's a way out, okay. There's a cave system. 30 seconds. Was it this cave system? No, I have no idea. All right, let's go out before I drown again. Because no one wants that. All right, but as it stands, we got... Uh, we got some materials, some copper. We got a bunch of quartz as well. Lead and silver, which is good. I've gotten really close to that ship, it feels like. Oh no, I haven't gone too far. Feels like I've gone far. We've got some more salvage here. Is this the one I scanned earlier? Yes, because those usually have stuff in them if they're open. This is the salvage I was at earlier. Yeah. Yeah. 